Begin by assessing the system layout. In this instance, there is a single tank layout. One main control box and one sensor assembly is therefore required. Offer the main control unit to the wall and unscrew the captive screws. Lower the hinge, line up the unit and mark up the exact position where the 8mm diameter holes need to be drilled. Close the lid and remove the unit. Drill the 8mm holes as marked and insert the wall plugs provided as shown. Once the power connectors have been removed and put aside, the power needs to be connected. Offer the main control unit back to the wall and open the lid. It's possible to remove the lid to facilitate installation by disconnecting the cable and unhinging as shown. Use the washers provided to avoid misalignment and the screws to attach the unit to the wall like so. This particular installation does not require subsidiary or battery backup modules, but this is how they would be mounted. Slide the tabs using a screwdriver as shown. Offer the battery backup module to the wall, aligning it carefully to the main control unit by using the tabs. Lower the hinge and mark up the exact position where the 8mm diameter holes need to be drilled. Close the lid and remove the unit. Using pre-drilled holes, attach the module alongside the main control box. Additional modules can be aligned in the same way as shown. The cable knockouts can be removed like so, to allow the cabling to be fed through the resultant openings to create a neat installation. It allows cables to be mounted through from the rear. These DIN rail features allow for an alternative mounting of the units. To facilitate the connection of the wiring between the battery and or subsidiary module and the main control unit, snap off the tabs between the units like so and insert the rubber grommet from the cable into the grooves between the two units. Re-offer the covers of the units, reconnecting the cable of the main control unit as shown and close the lid. If all three units were installed, this is how they would appear mounted on the wall. Once the main control unit is fixed to the wall, the vent box needs to be mounted and the sensor should be placed in the tank. If two tanks were present, two sensors would be required, one for each tank. These sensors would need to be connected to the vent box. Once in position on the tank, open the lid, check where the inlet is, you do not want the sensor too close to the inlet as high water pressure or flow may cause turbulence, causing the cable to move and give inaccurate readings. Decide where the hole needs to be drilled, drill a 25mm hole, taking care to prevent debris falling into the tank, and drop the sensor into the tank all the way to the bottom, leaving the sensor just touching the bottom of the tank in a vertical orientation. Then coil any excess cable around the vent box and fix it to the top of the tank using the sticky feet provided. The system is now ready to be wired and connected to the power. The safety sleeve needs to be slid off the cable connections like so. This safety sleeve provides double insulation and prevents loose wires touching any other part of the circuit. A qualified electrician has already completed the wiring system as far as the main control unit. This mains power cable needs to be fed through the gland in the main control unit, like so. As shown, the power can be connected away from the PCB, therefore making installation easier. Once wired up, plug the connector to the circuit board. This installation does not require a filling facility, so a control valve has not been installed. However, 
If a control valve was present, the pilot solenoid valve would need to be connected. Firstly, feed the cable as shown into the main control unit. Ensure the pilot valve remains disconnected to prevent possible filling before the tank level criteria has been set up. If the valve was connected when the power is turned on, the tank could begin to fill and overflow. Next, the wiring from the sensor assembly on the tank needs to be connected to the main control unit as shown. The system is now ready and power should be turned on once the lid has been refitted. Once the power is connected, the screen display will read Initializing. The LED will be amber and the system will default to alarm mode. The LED will be red. Once the setting criteria have been input, these alarms can be cleared. It is now possible to navigate through the menu. To leave the home screen, press OK or the right Select button. Press OK to enter main menu. If nothing else is selected for one minute, the screen will default back to the home screen. If filling was required on this system layout, Tanktronic would automatically recognize the sensor and pilot valve. If there were multiple tanks, it would be necessary to configure Tanktronic to recognize the individual sensors and what pilot valves they control. If there is no water in the tank, start filling by selecting Auto Setup, like so. Once the required level of water in the tank has been reached, this will need to be observed from the top of the tank, hit Done to stop filling. This will be the close level. The fill delay will have to be set next, as so. This is set relative to the close level i.e. you enter a value equivalent to the amount of water you want to use before the system starts filling. Enter fill delay as shown and save. Next, the alarm levels need to be set. Set the high or maximum level of required water as shown and save. Repeat for the low minimum level of water required as shown and save. Again, these are set relative to the close level and actual opening level respectively. The actual opening level is the close level minus the fill delay. Next, set the tank area as shown and save. This installation does not require a level offset, but this is how it would be set up. Level offset is required if the sensor does not reach the bottom of a tank or two or more tanks of different sizes are being monitored and a common set of readings is required for both tanks, for example a pair of balanced tanks with a common discharge. Next, the alarms need to be cleared and the Tanktronic screen will display the temperature, water levels and tank area as shown. The LED will now turn green and the installation is complete.